Hello, everybody. This is John Carlo here. Hope you're having a great Wednesday. Uh, I'll be getting started with uh, everything going uh, shortly, but uh, let's just wait for some more people to funnel in and uh, we'll jump right into it after that. Thank you. All right, we can get started, everybody. So uh, derivatives trading carries a high degree of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. All right, today we will be going over a brief intro to Edge Pro X, uh, an intro to Edge Clear, how to build a volume profile, and then how to draw a volume profile as well. And then at the end, if there's any questions, uh, I'll be there to answer those questions for you guys. <clears throat> so, what is Edge Pro X? Edge Pro X is an all in one solution for active traders. Uh, it has MBO capabilities, volume profiles, and TPOs, native order flow tools, fully functional with 300 plus indicators and studies. There's indicator layering, uh, it's native to Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, runs on Rhythmic, CQG, or IQ feed. All these features are available for the low price of $34.99 per month. Uh, this price does not include the cost for data. I'll be going over the cost for data at the end of the webinar. What does EdgeProx offer? Uh, it offers a heat map, volume imprint, volume profile, TPO and market profiles, advanced DOM, simulated trading, replay mode, cross instrument trading, cloud levels, Edge Pro line, OHLC lines, time and sales, and then again, 300 and plus uh, studies and indicators. <clears throat> so uh, what is EdgeClear? EdgeClear is an independent futures brokerage. We're created by traders for traders. We have an award-winning team, multiple clearing relationships with Philip Capital, Dorman, and Ironbeam. We have an experienced team, and our founder is, I'm sure everybody knows, Futures Trader 71. Uh, we're continuously building and innovating, and we're trader-inspired here. So to get started, how to build a volume profile. So if I jump over to Edge Pro X, uh, this is what my chart looks like right now. Um, I do have it already there, but to start completely fresh and from scratch, we will get rid of that. And also just kind of get rid of all the other indicators. So there's nothing there to distract from what I'm trying to accomplish. So if you have nothing on your chart, the way you'll add the volume profile is by pressing Control T, typing in volume profile, double clicking on volume profile, and then you will bring up this window. So going through, I'll go through all the three main tabs and what everything in there is showing. So from top down, the time range. What does the time range show? The time range shows the typical time frame for a volume profile study, um, which is typically one day, uh, but there are several other options available, including intraday values and weekly, monthly bar sizes. The time frame typically defines the range of tick data uh, used for each volume profile. So, for example, if I have the one day uh, time frame. This would start at the beginning of the trading day and finish at the end of the trading day, depending on the time that you have for set for this, uh, the time you have set within the hours. <clears throat> Going down, what is the tick interval? Uh, the tick interval is basically what this does is it defines the price range that applies to each row in the volume profile bar. Uh, a tick interval of one will plot a row for every price. Uh, in the case of the S&P 500 uh, or the S&P futures, a tick interval of four will display a row for every point since the tick is by a 0.25 interval. Um, switching over to the display, the align uh, section, what this is gonna show is this is gonna display the volume profile on either the left side of the screen 
or on the right side of the screen. Um, so that is what the align does. The width is going to display the width of the volume profile graph in pixels. So this is going to display the width in pixels here. Offset, what that is going to do is that's going to display the profile a certain number of pixels away from the right side hard edge. Um, so this can be used, for example, if you had cloud levels here and you had the text over here, uh, along this uh, hard edge right here, the pro volume profile would be layered over it. But if with the offset, if you put it at like 50, 50 tick, or I'm sorry, 50 pixels, it'll push the volume profile away by 50 pixels, allowing you to see the text along the hard edge. <clears throat> bar color, uh, what does the bar color display? It shows the default color for the volume profile rows. So this is gonna be the default color for the volume profile rows. Uh, the POC bar color, uh, what is this? This is the color of the point of control row. So this is going to show the color for the point of control row. Point of control line, this is, you can optionally display this by checking here. Uh, it's not shown by default, but uh, what this shows is it displays a horizontal line from the point of control row. Um, going down, bid color. Uh, the bid color is going to display, this is used when the price interval is dominated by the bid volume. The ask color is uh, the opposite of that. So the color is used when the price interval is dominated by ask volume. <clears throat> so um, then, the volume totals when this is enabled what this does is this displays the total volume for each row in the volume profile um, then the line font is obviously just uh, the font for the lines there um, value area so now going through here when you check and enable this the range percent what this is going to show is this shows the percentage of trading time slash volume to include in that value area uh, the bar color what is the bar color for the value area? What this does is this shades the color for the bars that are part of the value area. So for example, a semi-transparent color can be used to blend with the existing bar colors. <clears throat> uh, range lines, uh, this setting allows for the lines to be identified either at the top and bottom of the value area. So you, you'll be able to see that once I create this and then uh, range fill, the last thing here, what this does is this fills the white space within the value area with a specified color. So uh, now that we went through all of those, um, I'll just hit create. And now you'll see here, range lines, you'll see the value area. And then what you can do is I'll show you what the offset does, just so you can see what that does. So if I place this at a hundred pixels and hit update, it presses the volume profile away from the hard edge. Um, again, so then you'll be able to see all of this here. And this is what all, uh, how you're able to add a composite. And the one thing that I'll go back here and show is if I go to all settings again, so the time range, if I wanted to, let's say, have a weekly composite of a volume profile, I would add in seven days and apply an update. And now you see here, the volume profile is much larger than it was when I originally started the video. And you can see the value area has also stretched as well. So um, this is how you would add it in from the um, studies, and that is what each individual setting does in here. Um, obviously, this is just RTH data. So if you wanted to uh, change the volume profile to only display RTH data, this is how you do that. Um, was there any questions on the volume profile here that before I move forward on how to draw the volume profile? And uh, if you can't think of any questions now, uh, there is a Q&A portion at the end, just in case uh, I don't answer those now. But I, I'll move forward and show how to draw the volume profile. So here we'll, we'll delete this. So you can just right click, delete, <clears throat> takes that away. 
So the other way that you can create a volume profile is you can create a daily volume profile by drawing it. So the best way to do that would be if you head over to the left side here, you'll see that there's volume profile. If you select this, you can select and oops. And then from here, you can drag from where you'd want the volume profile to encompass. So if we wanted it to encompass the day so far, you would just drag it from the beginning all the way to the current bar. And then it'll load, generate the volume profile as so. And then all the settings that I showed you earlier can be accessed by double clicking. And then you can change and configure everything as I showed you earlier. So you would just change that to the right like so. Now it's now it's over here. Then what you can do is double click again. You can get the value area to show, have everything that I had displayed as so. So now you have this and this will encompass this area here so you can see this a little bit better. This is a better way and easier way to configure this for very specified time periods. Like you can get, boil this down, your chart, my chart's on 15 minutes. So then if you wanted to, you can do like a minute and then have this be only from this period to this period. And that can be done. Let's delete this. And the way you delete that is I just selected it and pushed the delete button on my keyboard. Click here. So we can just go from here to here. Now, now I have a nice volume profile from this very specific subset of time. And then again, you would just double click and edit from that period. But that is how you would draw and build the volume profile from scratch. <clears throat> so if there's any questions on building the volume profile or building uh, or drawing it from scratch, please let me know. Um, and I can go over this and again and, and kind of get more specific and detailed if there's something you're, you're looking for in particular. <clears throat> okay, so it doesn't look like there's uh, any questions on the volume profile. Uh, usually people will submit questions prior to the, the walkthrough. And so I this is the time where I usually go over that. So somebody asked, what is the cost for data? Uh, the cost for rhythmic data is tr for full depth data. So the full depth MBO data is gonna cost $12 per month per exchange. And then there's an additional $20 API, $20 API fee that Rhythmic charges on top of that. So um, the full bundle is $35 a month, which uh, allows you access to all four exchanges. And you, with that bundle, you would get essentially one exchange for free uh, with the way that's built out. Um, there, you can also use CQG with this, which costs uh, fairly similar for the full depth data, but with CQG, you don't get uh, MBO data, which you won't get the uh, sophisticated features in the DOM like you see here. Uh, you won't be able to see the, the heat map like so here. Uh, well, you won't be able to see it, all of it. You will see a, a short um, 10 periods up and 10 price periods down. So the CQG is slightly more constricted than it would be with Rhythmic, but the cost for that is uh, $12 per month per exchange as well. And then additionally, there's a $10 API fee as well. So <clears throat> that is the cost for the data in for using the data in Edge Pro X. There you would be able to use CQG or Rhythmic, but my personal recommendation is uh, Rhythmic just because it allows that MBO features in the platform that you usually see in my walkthroughs. <clears throat> so um, again, if there's any questions, now would be the time to ask. It doesn't have to be about volume profiling. It could be just general questions that you want me to di directly answer. Uh, if, you have any questions just let me just type them in the chat i'll answer those uh and, and then we can uh move forward with the webinar and, and kind of conclude it for the day i'll give you guys like five minutes to type some questions up if you don't have any we can just uh end this now so um yeah i can give my you know general what I've, the little knowledge that I do know about volume profile. So essentially when you're looking at it, you're getting the breakdown of price at volume by price. That's what it is. So if I pull it up again, let's pull this up. This in the most practical 
uh, sense, what this it allows people to see is uh, support and resistance areas uh, within the time frame that they're grabbing. So if I, since I have a daily volume profile, when you set up value areas and you display everything according like how I showed, you can see potential support and resistance areas. Um, you can, and then you can place your trades based on that information given. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be able to help you guys develop strategies here, but um, just in a practical sense, volume profile does help or can help with uh, locating support and resistance. That's in the most general essence what it would do. Um, so can you show a standard footprint? Um, so the person that asked that, uh, what are you looking to see in the footprint? Uh, are you seeing, you're looking to see a volume profile with the, the footprint? Uh, could you elaborate on that a little bit? <clears throat> but um, how do I adjust the scale on the main chart? So if you're not able to adjust the scaling like here, so typically you can shrink and, and uh, contrast that there, the way that you would, the, the reason that that's probably not able to adjust that there is, is you have it either scaled to the DOM, which is here, or the other um, area that I would look is make sure you don't have auto scale on. So I would turn that off, which is right here. Now you can freely stretch and move this around like you would please. Uh, check that there. So yeah, uh, somebody asked if I'll be going over how to use the DOM. Yes, that will be in uh, a future webinar that I'm gonna do. We're just going through and focusing on specific instruments or specific um, instruments and tools within Edge Pro X so that I can really focus in on those tools and people can come to the webinars with questions that they might have on those specific tools. So to answer that question, yes, I can. I will be going over um, how to use the DOM and I'll, I'll be going over, you know, uh, footprint charts later on in other webinars, as well as uh, I just completed a webinar on the TPO chart, so or a market profile chart. So make sure you check out our YouTube channel and look that look at the other videos that I I have on there. Uh, those other videos will be helpful if you may have missed other uh, webinars that I've done, and you can access that at YouTube.com/slash Edgeclear. Uh, subscribe to it. Uh, that'll help you, and you can get some notifications on when we post videos on there. You can set that up for yourself so you don't miss anything that we post. Uh, the other areas that you can look for support articles or any other form of support would be, you can head to support.edgeclear.com. We have knowledge based articles there. Those are short, brief articles that we put together to help you kind of piece together what you're looking for, the answer that you're looking for. Uh, you can email us at edgefox at edgeclear.com as well as give us a call at 773-832 320. Uh, and if there's anybody here that's looking for a broker, I am a broker at EdgeClear, and I'd be happy to help you get set up with EdgeClear. If there's any questions that you may have about the brokerage services we offer, feel free to email me directly. Uh, you can find my email at the beginning of the slides here. Oops, let's go back. So if you have any questions, this is my direct email. You can email me directly or call me directly after this, and I'd be happy to help you move forward with that. <clears throat> So if there aren't any other questions, I'd be, uh, I will just end this here. Uh, remember, you guys can email me, call me. I'd be happy to answer any further questions that I didn't get to in the webinar. Have a great day and happy trading, everybody. Cheers.